All right, this is uh, Contract Basics. It's part of a series I've been doing. This is video number three, I believe. And this is cover, today's video, we're gonna cover the essential elements of a contract. Contracts have the same type of essential elements. A contract must contain certain things, otherwise, no matter who agrees to what, it's not a valid or an enforceable contract. So I want everybody to know what those are. Now the first one is, the first essential element, or number one, is what we call offer and acceptance. So we get a, and I know you've heard this before, this term, a meeting of the minds, all right, regarding the subject matter. A meeting of the minds regarding the subject matter. All right, uh, I believe I discussed this in the second video in this series, uh, meeting of the minds regarding the subject matter. So let's, so a buyer says, I offer you $100,000 for your house, and you say, great, I accept your offer. So we have an offer acceptance. So that is what we call a meeting of the minds. All right, and the subject matter is the sale of the home. So that is the first essential element. Number two, the second essential element, consideration. Now consideration simply means something of value. Typically it is cash in a, in a real estate transaction, but it doesn't have to be. It could be diamonds, it could be a pile of dirt. But the consideration must be legal. What you couldn't do is say, hey, I'll give you 10 pounds of cocaine for your house, all right? That would not be legal consideration. And don't forget this too, love and affection for let's say a son or a daughter, that is considered good and valuable consideration. So maybe a, a father and a mother, a parent, or parents are giving a house to a child. Well, the consideration is the love and affection for a son or daughter. That is good and valuable consideration. All right, element number three, capacities of the parties. This simply means that they have the legal capacity legal capacity to enter into a contract. A legal capacity to enter into a contract. So for example, if somebody has been uh, declared uh, uh, incompetent because they have dementia, uh, a court has declared them. So they, they, would not be, they would not have the capacity to enter into a contract, all right? The next one, number four, is legal object or what we call, uh, oop, I forgot a C in there or what we call the legality of the object. It must be for a legal purpose. So the contract must be for a legal purpose. And certainly, for example, uh, leasing out a property is for a, le a legal purpose. Uh, selling your house or buying a house is for a legal purpose. Um, if the contract is binding two parties to do an illegal act, it's not, uh, it's not a legal contract, that it would be missing one of the essential elements. Number five, it must be in writing and it must be signed when required by law. Now there is a law called the statute of frauds. Every, every state has their own version of the statute of frauds, but one of the things that's, that is common with the statute of frauds is number one, that a lease of more than one year must be in writing to be enforceable. And the other one is any kind of a real estate contract that deals with the transfer of ownership or transfer of title is required to be in writing to be enforceable. And here's what I mean. So let's say a couple of people sit down at the bar and uh, one gentleman says to the other, hey, I'll buy your house for $200,000. And the uh, second gentleman says, great, deal, I accept your offer. Well, because it was not in writing, it is not enforceable, all right? So a judge would throw it out because the statute of frauds requires it to be in writing and be signed by all the parties. So this is the essential elements that's required to be in, in uh, all contracts.